Proteins come in two flavors, both usable and unusable. And by that I mean if I had a drinking glass in each hand, an empty drinking glass, and I drop one, and it broke into seven pieces, and I pick up all seven pieces in my hand, what do I technically have in each hand? A drinking glass, right? This one's usable, this one is not. But they're still technically drinking glass. One just broke it, a broken drinking glass. So proteins come usable and unusable. And if you, and I did this once, I called up, I think it was Kraft, and I called up and I got to speak eventually after being on hold and cut off to a nutritional scientist and I say, okay, on your product here it says nine grams per serving of protein. Is that before you cook it or after? Because it was a cooked product that was canned. I said, before or after? He goes, it's the same. Nine grams before you cook it or afterwards. But he volunteered the information. He said, but afterwards it's not usable protein. And we got to talking because it's not usual that you would get somebody representing a company like that to admit something like that, that it's not usable protein, which means it's kind of misleading to even have it on the box. There's nine grams of protein in every serving because it's not usable by the body. Here's a banana protein. Proteins are made up of amino acids, individual ones. And when you eat a bit of raw banana, uncooked banana, you take it in and your body cuts these bonds between these amino acids. It's called cleaving. So your body will cleave these bonds, take the amino acids, it'll take all the ends and throw it into the end uh, draw. The F's go into the F draw, the J's into the J draw, okay? Then when you're another part of your body that needs to make, it's busy making more eyeball. It's replenishing your eyeball tissue. So it needs protein for your eyeball. So it goes and takes out the G's and the A's and the F's, whatever it needs to make eyeball. Um, that's why if you want to build muscle, you don't have to eat muscle. You don't have to eat animal to build muscle. Just like you know that to build new eyeballs every six years, you don't ever have to eat eyeballs. We know that. Let's cook this banana. Now we're going to make banana bread. So we're going to take this wonderful banana, we're now going to light a fire under it, and at about 100 and I don't know, 25 degrees, somewhere around there. Oh, look what happens to it. That's called denaturation. It's been denaturized. Nature is a good thing. When you de-anything, and that's not good. So when you denature something, that's not good. Here's what happens to it. The amino acids are still intact. It takes a lot more heat to damage an amino acid. They're very hardy. So they're still intact, but how is the body going to cleave those bonds? It can't. It can't make, separate this into the separate amino acids anymore, okay? That's part of the problem. The most significant consequence of denaturation is that the protein loses its characteristic biological activity. Now what does that mean? Loses its characteristic biological, that's a science guy's way of saying it's broken. It's, it's te technically still a protein, but it no longer functions as a protein, so it's unusable protein. And that's, and that's just from a biology textbook. The point I'm trying to make here is it's been known for quite a long time what happens to the uh, constituent components of food when you cook them. What happens to the proteins, what happens to the fats, what happens to the carbohydrates when you expose it to various levels of heat. It's just not common knowledge. But let's say you're eating enough protein, so even if you cook half the protein and half the protein's raw, like you eat plenty of raw bananas and you cook some of the bananas, what's the big deal? You're still getting enough protein. No one suffers from a protein deficiency in this country. We're getting plenty. The other side of the coin is this. Alarm bells are going to go off. This is a very dangerous thing. Why is this dangerous to the human body? We know what that is. The body doesn't have any idea what that is. That's a foreign invader. The end, so the body says, okay, I don't recognize this, and anything I don't recognize, got to go out. Right? If somebody comes into your house and you recognize them, good to go. What if someone just walked into your house and you didn't recognize them? they got to go out. You're not going to let them stay. The body is the same way. Get it out. So it's going to create antibodies. The antibodies are going to attack this thing. But how does it do that? It can't just create an antibody that can go out and attack anything. Right? You want to get something very specific. So it's done with kind of a lock and a key type of arrangement. Kind of like a two-piece jigsaw puzzle. Where this is the foreign invader, that thing, right? And the body makes this antibody to lock in with this and get it on out so it doesn't hurt anything else. Now that's good if the foreign invader is a virus, a bacteria, or some other pathogen. But in this case, the foreign invader is something that was kind of natural. But okay, it's gonna, antibodies are going to attack that thing and eat it up and get it out. But now, since it was made up of amino acids, this thing that's being created is also going to end up attacking healthy cells inadvertently, but it's going to do it. It's going to attack healthy cells. In the case of cooked 
dairy products, pasteurized dairy products. And all dairy products you're going to buy in the store for the most part are pasteurized, have been cooked. So the cooked proteins within dairy products are going to cause the body to make an antibody that's also going to damage the beta cells of the pancreas. The beta cells of the pancreas are that, is that part of the pancreas which is responsible for making insulin. That's why dairy products are, their dairy product consumption is a contributing factor to diabetes. Also, these are going to bang away and eat the myelin sheaths of your nerves, the, the, uh, the outer coating of your nerves, the insulative coating of your nerves. This is why cooked dairy products are a contributing factor to multiple sclerosis. And I've had a client just diagnosed with MS at a relatively young age, eating a lot of dairy products. I said, try no dairy products, just zero, and be very careful even in the other processed food. Oh, she just went to a raw food diet. She didn't want to hear about not eating processed foods either. She just went to a raw food diet. MS went away. Now, what do they call it when antibodies attack healthy tissue? Autoimmune disease. It's when the body attacks itself. Well, let me ask you, would you just take your fist and just beat yourself up for no reason? No, if you did that, you would have a darn good reason for it, right? So if the body's attacking itself, there's got to be a darn good reason for it. That's this. It's consuming cooked, damaged proteins. So in the days before we started putting fire to our food, it's logical to assume that there was no lupus or uh, diabetes or any of these autoimmune diseases where the body ends up attacking itself. Now, I'm often asked, is there enough protein in a fruit and veggie diet? Let's say you realize that you're under muscle and you have been sedentary for a long time and now you want to get into the gym and you want to start working out and you, and you want to become appropriately muscled. A lot of people are concerned, well, don't I have to start consuming more protein now that I'm going to be going in the gym and building muscle because mu uh, protein is used to build muscle. So let's look at this. Protein is used to build muscle. It's a major component. But protein is used to build every tissue in your body, not just muscle, of course. So when in your life, from the moment you're born to the moment that you die, do you think you're doing the most growth, the most building of, of muscle and, and body tissue? First year and a half. The first year and a half of your life, that's when you're doing the most explosive growth that you'll ever do. So that's when you're going to need proportionally the most protein that you'll ever need, right? Now, what are you eating when you're this age? Well, it should be mother's milk. So how much protein is in mother's milk? There it is. The amount of protein in human milk and the amount of protein in fruit. They have about the same. In fact, there can be more protein in fruits and vegetables than in mother's milk. But as an adult, we finish growing. Now we're just doing maintaining. So why would we need more protein than a baby needs, proportionally speaking? We don't. So as long as you don't cook the protein that you're consuming, there is plenty in fruits and vegetables to build all the muscle that you need to build. And if you don't believe me, ask these guys. They don't eat any cooked food. They don't eat any animal food. They're just eating fruits and green leafy vegetables. And they're pretty strong.